Do you good discuss how to deploy uh, application using CDK? And uh, we are gonna see like how we can able to de deploy uh, using uh, using CDK. We are creating VPC. We are creating add gateway, sub subnet configurations, uh, EC2 instance, and uh, DB instances, RDS. We are gonna do everything in a hands-on way. So hope you guys enjoy this. Yep. Okay, uh, let's start with this thing uh, without further, further ado. Uh, let me just share my screen first uh, because I have one uh, thing to describe. So, so this is the architecture we're going to build. This is a very simple architecture. This is, uh, this is our client and we will have a VPC. Inside the VPC will have public subnet, private subnet, and we'll put our EC2 instance inside our web server security group, and the database inside private subnet and data its own security group, and uh, the traffic from or the request from uh, EC2 instance can only reach uh, the database. No, no other uh, person or client can connect to the database directly. This is a very simple structure we'll be building using CDK. So uh, you are, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Let me share the screen, OK? Yeah. OK. I hope you guys are able to see my screen. And then me put it away. OK. You guys are able to see my screen, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Let me uh, create a CDK from scratch. OK. I'm going to hit CDK in it. And now you can see it is actually creating everything for us. Now let me go to my photo editor. See here, inside this monolith repo, we can able to see the stacks, right? Okay. Uh, probably using a different screen uh, because I wasn't able to see the CDK in it and your code editor. Oh, okay. Uh, can you able to see me now? Uh, I can see you now. Okay. Uh, let me stop share and let me re share again. Yeah, yeah, sure. Stop screen share, screen share, screen share, window. Yep. I can share this. Hope you can see my code or no. Screen share. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we were using CDK Net app, and uh, after hitting uh, uh, enter, it will automatically create you this. Okay. And then by default, it will have SQS and it will have the uh, AWS CDK library inside that in a records dot, uh, requirement dot text uh, file. So you can hit a pip install and you can able to uh, install that. So uh, here for now, I want to have a, a two libraries from CDK, AWS CDK. So what I'm going to have is AWS EC2 as yes. okay, and the other thing what I have here is I just want to oh, I don't want this so want to have I'm gonna. Uh, this is a command which I wanted to have uh, inside my, uh, what is it? Uh, and let me paste it here. This is the command which I want to have. It's just a moment. And hope 
this is yeah. That is the indentation now. So it won't throw any error now. Okay. These are the subnet configurations which we wanted to add. So in this code, what we have is we are uh, using the VP, uh, we are creating a VPC now. OK, uh, we are using from EC2 uh, library. We are using uh, we are taking a method called VPC. And here I'm giving an ID and then I'm making this as maximum availability zone inside the VPC is three. And I'm just giving a, a CIDR block as uh, 10.00 slash 16 and I'm giving uh, initializing an add gateway. I don't need any add gateway. So I'm giving us just zero and then I'm configuring my uh, subnet configurations here says I want to have a subnet uh, some public subnets and some private subnets, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm just configuring that uh, using the subnet type public uh, and for private isolated, I wanted to have a subnet uh, subnet type as private isolated with the CIDR mask as 24. And the next, what we have to do is we wanted to have a public security group because uh, the security groups handles everything for EC2 instance. Like what are the subnets you wanted to add uh, says that uh, let's say you wanted to have a, a specific rule that only these kind of uh, IP address needs to be come inside to my EC2 instance or inside my VPC, right? Like you can avoid all the issues like uh, 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 the things like uh, unwanted subnets. You want you don't need anything apart from these subnets. Let's say you want to have a uh, for example, 15.6.2.13 as your subnet. And you want only this subnet to be access your uh, EC2 instance, or you can to get get a request from this subnet alone. Okay, you wanted to pass it along with your EC2 instance, and you want to play it around, like whether it wants to read inside the resources it's present inside your uh, VPC. You can specify that in the security group. You can have an entire control of your instance, your uh, everything inside that security group. So uh, for safety purpose, you have a control over here. OK, next is I'm going to have those security group here. So just a moment. I want to. Have this and yeah. okay. And the other part is this is the code which I wanted to have. Uh, in the same library, you have a method called security group where it takes the ID for the security group and for which VPC you are creating this security group. So this is the line of code for this. And then we need to have a rule, right? Like what are the uh, says that incoming rules you wanted to have for this uh, EC2 instance for this inside this VPC alone. So I'm going to have those here since we are going to create a, uh, for AC2 instance, we need to add all those SSH endpoints and requests from the other outside here, like HTTP request and those stuff. We're going to have a rules set up here as And 
this is gonna be what are the rules I specified here is uh, I'm adding an ingestion rule for this uh, I'm for now I'm not specifying any kind of uh, typical IDs like uh, IPs like uh, I want this from 10.01, not from 10.02, till the uh, cider block needs to be like just uh, 24, or it should not be like more than 24 or something like that. I'm not specifying anything here for our uh, demo purpose. So here I want to have any kind of an IPv4 address to just uh, as in, in just rule, okay? So I'm just connecting to the port. This port uh, 80 is for HTTP. As you guys all know that the normal port number for HTTP is 80. And for uh, here, I'm just setting for HTTPS, okay? Like, uh, let's say some of the HTTPS dot some uh, random IP address is coming up. Uh, if we don't give, if you don't allow this, it won't allow this uh, HTTPS request to be inside this VPC. And then I'm just adding a one more in this role for uh, SSH. Uh, in further video, we will be having a demo session on that. Uh, how to like what you can do in the EC2 instance, or you can just have a bash in host on that, or like and you can connect to your EC2 instance and you can uh, add a cell script or whatever the stuff you want to do there, right? So, for that, we are enabling the SSH, okay? And then, uh, yeah. From my uh, point of this, let me. These are the three things which I wanted to show you for now, where you how you can able to uh, create a VPC inside that, and how you can configure a subnets inside the VPC, and how you can create a security group, and how you can add a rule inside the security group, like what are the subnets you wanted to have inside the uh, allowing others. Okay, so let me. Save this. Uh, now it is done. Uh, okay. And this is my requirements file, right? So I just need to run my source backup. Okay. And okay. Now I want to have my uh I want to deploy this right. If I will go to this, I wanted to hit uh let's say CDK go to shop folder. So, and I wanted to hit CDK deploy and okay, sorry, I just want to go to the other before and CDK deploy. It kind of take a time. It first synthesize your code, then it will show you what are the things you wanted to add it here, right? It will give you the output of what are the things you just add in here and then i can just hit the yes so it will deploy it so just take a minute i hope this probably gonna deployed in a minute okay it is deployed let's see yep I just want to have this set and let me go to let me stop share and reshare the screen. So I just want to have okay. This is my sandbox and I'm inside the sandbox. You're able to see the sandbox screen, right? Console. 
I'm inside the console. Let me go to the uh, not CloudWatch. Let me go to Cloud Formation so I can show you the created uh, resources there. And, yeah, you can see the workshop model the repo stack is created, and it's if it is created successfully, it says created uh, create complete. If it is failed, it automatically rolled back, and you can able to easily delete it by hitting delete. You can see the number of resources. I just create a monolith VPC here. Everything, all the process of the VPC, it shows here. And uh, the security group which I created, I can just click here. I can go to Mage2 instance, and I can see that. This is the VPC I just created. You can see the VPC also in the console. It's available now. Even the CIDR I have created, right? 10.00. Uh, slash 16. It is there. Now, yep. That's that's from my side. Over to you, uh, Sauro. Thanks, Abu. Uh, thanks for your uh, stack. Now I'll create ECP instance and an, R, an RDS instance in that stack and we'll deploy it again so that yep. uh, we can see how we can fit all the I mean, all the resources inside our VPC and submit. Let me start with uh, the, we'll start with screening, sharing my screen. Yep. Yes, it's visible. Now, in this yes. point, we have learned uh, how to create the security group and its ingress tool. Now, I'll uh, demonstrate how to create, uh, or rather, I'll describe how uh, to create EC2 instance. Now, we have already imported uh, EC2. Now, in, inside, uh, use EC2. And there is a method called instance. And we'll have to provide a uh, name, uh, name of the instance. VPC for this case, the VPC is book created. Instance type, now type of instance, there is a, there is a number of, uh, uh, certain number of types that we can select. For this, uh, this workshop, I'm currently using T2 micro. Uh, people, people are more familiar with this kind of approach, T2 micro rather than bus table. So it's basically T2 and micro. Then uh, we need to mention the mesh, machine image. This is basically AMI, name of the AMI based on the region. I'm using uh, generic Linux with this AMI that indicates uh, Ubuntu in this region, US East 1. Key name, this is basically SH key that you can use to log into the EC2 instance. Security group, the security group should be created uh, in this case web server security group. And subnet, it, here we'll have to put a subnet selection. And I'm currently putting my EC2 instance inside a public subnet. Now coming to uh, security group, uh, database security group. So as uh, you are already uh, familiar with that security, how to create security group, uh, we need to put our database or RDS instance as a separate, a separate uh, security group because uh, we want uh, the traffic from uh, our EC2 instance security group to reach uh, RDS security groups, nothing else, to limit the access of the database because uh, you can have sensitive information on um, inside your RDS instance. So there's that. And so this is how you create the uh, security group as Subbu described and I'm adding a rule. Here, one thing uh, is different, uh, what the Subbu created. As you can see, I'm defining PR as a security group ID because only, uh, the traffic only from this web server security group ID will reach this database security group. That's the only reason I'm creating this one. And connection port here, I'll be using MySQL uh, server. So port is 3306. And now coming to RDS instance, so you will have to in import uh, R this one. Uh, it updates RDS as RDS. And using that, you can create a database instance. Uh, this is an identifier of the instance uh, engine. I'm mentioning uh, we'll be using MySQL. And database identifier, 
uh, deletion protection uh, so since the data will contain sensitive information or information related to your business you might need to uh, protect the database even if you delete the stack the database will uh, stay for well, this case, uh, setting it to false now instance type type of uh, server that you want to allocate to oh, this database for this i'm using t3 micro and storage is 8 gigs of ram and security group i'm putting my uh, putting my database inside uh, database security group and coming to credentials now this is a root admin credentials uh, there are several ways that you can generate the credential i'm using generated secrets uh, when you use this method it will create as uh, the method description says it creates credential with the password generated and stored in the secret manager this is basically aws secret manager so you just have to provide username and aws secret manager will create a password for the database and uh, store it in a ssm uh, secret manager now name of the database uh, this simple name of the database i'm using stack prefix here to prefix the uh, uh, the stack and vpc instead of vpc you want to put and subnet for this for this case i'm putting my database inside uh, private isolated now uh, since uh, we have created the stack let me start with uh, the deploy we'll deploy the stack and i will let you know how uh, things go there okay it will take, uh, take good amount of time because we are creating our data instance here so we might need to first forward the video and we will need to show you the reason okay okay as you guys can see it's already created let me uh, stop sharing the vs code and she uh, let me share the aws console so as you can can see uh, uh, the the web server we created or i created here is already available let me uh, go to cloud formation and this is the stack it says already created create complete and as you can see all it, all the create events are there and for resources we have VPC, SG, uh, EC2 instance, database SG, and uh, RDS instance, everything is there. And I guess uh, let me show you the EC2 instance. So there are two EC2 instances running. Uh, this one is our uh, EC2 instance, it says we server stack, slash we server instance. So this is the uh, EC2 instance we created, uh, T2 micro, as I said and maybe secrets manager or oh, we can probably see there your has your credentials that was generated by the cdk to to store the address credential inside aws access manager uh, you can probably retrieve the data in case okay this is the coding example how to retrieve the data or uh, the credentials from secrets manager to connect to the database okay so i guess that's uh, about that's about it uh, thank you for your time yep now we'll, thank you guys yeah we'll try to do more videos on uh, this topic itself uh, thanks thanks for your time yeah thank you guys bye bye